Hey guys, it's Ann over at Plant Obsessed, and today is sort of the part two of the harvest of the urban worm bag. This video is going to be on resetting the urban worm bag after it's been harvested. Because as you can imagine, I did take out um, probably about three or four gallons of castings. And if you watched that other video, which I can put up here if you want to watch that first. Um, basically, I took out three gallons of casting, which leaves kind of a hole in the bottom. So I haven't had a lot of luck with like taking a broom handle or kicking it or whacking it. I don't know if I lack the strength or I don't know, whatever the problem is. So what I normally do is I get in there and find a side all the way at the bottom here and knock it down from there. Okay, let's see. Really decomposed orange. So anybody that says that um, the acid from an orange really hurts the skin of the poor little worms, they're doing it to themselves. So I doubt that they would hurt themselves by crawling inside of an orange. So, myth busted. So you can tell this is a good moisture in here. I mess everything up. I take a little look at a worm ball in an apple. Isn't that adorable? And I think it does, especially since I left it for so long, I think it does get a little compacted. Maybe that's why I don't have good luck with the banging on the sides of it causing it to fall down to where it's supposed to in the harvest panel. So I've gotten to the part, you can see how deep I am in this, but I've gotten to the part where I, there's the hole where my hand fits through. And then I'm just going to lift up on the part that's near it, taking any large bits with me and making sure that that's all filled in and then I'm going to do that on the other side. I think it was the system was intended to be a little bit less labor intensive. You can just kind of bang on the sides. I don't know maybe if I had better upper body strength that would work for me but um, it is what it is and I'm doing things that are within my capability. So when I started having moisture problems, I took some super thick cardboard and shoved it down in the sides of the bag. Um, each piece was about two foot by four foot at the time. So they have really eaten up that cardboard. I had forgotten I put it in there until just now. I refuse to give up on these bags. These green bags will decompose in a worm bin. Oh, yeah, but uh, Tivana tea bags do not decompose. Nada. That's coming out. It's been in there for like a year. Even I know when to say when. Not really. That's a total lie. Alright, so getting close on this side. Another tea bag. So I'm just going to make sure that everything did fall down so that there is something to harvest next time. There we go. 
so that that's that. It's knocked down now. So I will probably harvest again in a month. I'm going to try and get on a better schedule now that I'm not really in the busy time of work now. And I can get myself on a more consistent schedule. Worm ball in the avocado peel. Okay, no worm ball in the mango pit because I think they already ate the goodies out of it. Alright, so as you can tell this is getting kind of full. So I'm not going to feed food food. I am just going to give them bedding and then a handful of scraps from what I made dinner the other night. So what I am going to do is they're going to get a cat litter bucket of pre-composted leaves or partially pre-composted leaves. Um, I know a lot of people are like, oh god, you're bringing all the, the bad bugs in the house. It's going to be terrible. Cats are sleeping with dogs. Oh. Um, haven't seen it. I've been putting leaves in my inside compost bin for the whole time that I've been doing it and I've not had a problem. However, and here's the whole wow it, however. These have been outside. They has, have been frozen. They have been in my compost tumbler. Um, I let them dry out a little bit um, in the house, uh, in the basement. Where I'm at right now is not the basement because these are African night crawlers. And as I discovered last winter, the 65 or 70 degrees in my basement, which sometimes if it gets super like 20 below Fahrenheit here in Illinois, um, they really, um, I lost population. I don't know if they stopped breeding and the older ones died or exactly what the mechanism for the loss of population was, but I did lose population. So I'm just incorporating this in so the worms can get in there. The moisture throughout, like you saw as I was digging around, um, was just fine. What do you think? Anybody want to bet? Am I going to get an avocado tree out of this? We'll see. They, worms, my worms do like to make avocado trees. Okay, so I've managed to get some of the castings on top here. And then I'm going to spray it. So if I've ever answered your questions about what I use in order to spray my bins with, this is what I have room for. If I had a bigger operation, I'd probably get one of those big one or two gallon garden sprayers. Dollar store, five bucks. Can I do this? Honestly, they last a couple of years and then something inside goes bad. And then... I just spray things down. You can adjust this brass nozzle if you want more. I do. Oops. Here. There we go. Um, just making sure that there isn't any truly dry things in here because they won't move in unless there is a certain amount of moisture. The way that they move mechanically is through body slime or I'm sure there's a technical biological term I don't remember what it is but when they're moving they won't move on to a dry surface on purpose unless they are seriously um, in trouble so I try and make sure that there is some moisture and as you saw when I dumped the bucket in here this was really 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 dry um, bugs need and bad bugs good bugs whatever they need certain things moisture being one of them and one of the ways that I keep bad bugs, or any bugs for that matter, from multiplying in my leaf matter that I save to feed to the worms over the winter is by controlling the moisture. If there's no moisture, you're not going to have a lot of bugs. You might have spiders, but I don't consider them to be a problem. They're actually helpers. Because when I go nuts with the fruit feedings, and I end up with um, fruit gnats, in my unlidded bins, like this has a zipper so I don't get fruit gnats in here too bad. But in the bins where I don't have a lid, if I am feeding a lot of fruit, then um, I will get fruit gnats. And the spiders, 
they know what they're doing. They just will make a little spider web on top of my bin. And the next thing I know, I got a fat spider and no... Well, there's, there's fungus gnats and there's fruit gnats. They're actually two different things. And so, as you can see, I've used up... This is a one liter spray bottle and I've used up almost the entire thing. So, that's one large drinking water bottle full of liquid in here. Alright, we'll be back with the scraps. I'm really only feeding these because uh, the Ziploc bag died and it has to get retired. I use these until they need retiring and then there we are. So I've got some limes, avocado shells. I'll just put them under. In case you're wondering, the avocado shells are from a seafood salad that we made and these are golden kiwis and lime. The golden kiwis were just breakfast. Those are the best kiwis on the planet. I am serious. If you get a chance to get any of those instead of normal kiwis, there's no acidity or bite or anything. They are awesome. No, I'm not affiliated with any kiwi companies. All right, so that's it. They got a little bit of stuff just because I need to get rid of it, and then it was the five gallon or four gallon bucket of cat litter worth of leaves. Get a little hanger on there. Check my hands, make sure I'm not taking any babies with me. So that's it for today. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave those below. I know a lot of people are thinking, should I get a bin system or should I get a bag system? Should I not? Uh, how much work is it? What do I have to do? Um, so go ahead and add your questions below. It's not only me that will answer it. There's a lot of hobby experts. There are even some professional experts that will comment on other videos to help people along so that everybody is successful uh, because that's the kind of community we are in the vermiculture worm farming family. So if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, hit the little bell icon. Alright guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody have a good day.